All right, let's dive in. Veeam licensing, right? It's a bit of a head scratcher sometimes. Oh, absolutely. We've got some research here, uh, you know, trying to decode it all, see if we can make sense of it for everyone out there. Remember the good old days when you bought software and it was like yours, you know, yeah. done deal. Now it's all subscriptions like everything else. We're going to see what that means, especially, you know, for backups, because that's got to be reliable, right? Can't mess around with backups. So get this, Veeam, you know, they're usually pretty flexible with licensing, right. but they've made a big change recently. They have, yeah. Um, they used to offer both. So yeah. perpetual licenses, yeah. you know, you buy it, it's yours forever. And then they have a subscription model too. But they've actually mostly phased out the perpetual licenses for new customers now. Wow. So no more like owning it outright. That's a pretty big shift. It is. I can already hear people, you know, Yeah. not happy about that. Yeah, I mean, it's understandable, right? I mean, people like to have that that control, like you were saying, to just own the software outright. But this is actually, it's a very common trend in the industry in general. Oh, is it? Why is that? What's the appeal uh, for the company, you know, to do it this way? Well, I think from the vendor perspective, subscriptions provide a much more predictable revenue stream, hmm. which obviously that helps with long-term planning and investment. In, in the product itself and the development. Makes sense. And and it also lets them roll out those continuous updates, you know, mm -hmm. the security patches, all that stuff. Yeah. Which is, I mean, let's face it, it's essential in today's world, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. The cybersecurity landscape is, is it's crazy out there. Yeah, exactly. Those hackers are always one step ahead, or trying to be at least. They are, so you got to keep up with the latest defenses. It's like an arms race, right? It is, absolutely is. Always trying to stay one step ahead. Right, you're always trying to, yeah, stay ahead of the bad yeah. guys. Okay, so I, I see the logic there, you know, from Veeam's perspective. But right. a lot of people, I think, they just want, you know, the basic backup solution. Right. They don't need all the bells and whistles. They just want something that's reliable, that's simple, doesn't cost a fortune, right? Sure. So if if you're that person, what are your options now? Right. So with this subscription model, Veeam basically has two main paths you can take. Um, one is socket-based licensing. And the other is instance-based licensing. Okay, break that down for me. All right, so imagine, think of your, your server kind of like a power strip. It's got a bunch of sockets on it, right? Okay. So with socket-based licensing, you're essentially paying per socket on that power strip. Mm -hmm. No matter how many virtual machines, those are the VMs, how many of those are plugged in. Okay, so it's not about how much you're using it. It's about the, the capacity. Exactly. It's about that server capacity. Mm -hmm. So this is really cost-effective if you've got a lot of VMs packed onto just a few servers. Okay, makes sense. So if it's densely packs, that's the way to go. But what if you've got, you know, like spread out, like a city, right? You've got the downtown, but you've got the suburbs too. Right, yeah. If your VMs are more spread out, then the instance space model makes more sense. Okay. Um, it's more like, you know, paying for cloud storage. Pay as you go kind of thing. Exactly. You okay. pay for what you're actually using. So um, it's more flexible. You know, you can scale up or down. As needed. Okay, so that's good if you've got a lot of change happening, I guess. You know, you're growing, you're shrinking, who knows? Right, exactly. But either way, both of those options, it means you're paying, you know, every month or whatever. Right, yeah, it's ongoing, yep. It's not just buy it and you're done. It's not a one-time purchase anymore. But you do get support with it, right? That's bundled in. You do, yep. You get access to their support team. They can help you out with any problems, you know, walk you through things. That's important, yeah. It is, for sure. But you could choose not to renew that support, right? Once yeah. the subscription's up. You could, yes, but... But I'm guessing that's not really the best idea. It's not, no. I mean, because then you're on your own, right? You yeah. don't get those updates. You yeah. don't get the security patches. And that's, you know, that's a risk, especially these days. That's a big risk, yeah. So it's like you're choosing between peace of mind or like, right. you know, being vulnerable. Yeah, exactly. Okay, but let's say you're, you know, extra cautious. Like, you want your backups locked down tight. Right. What are the options then? Well, Veeam does offer some really, really strong security measures. We're okay. talking about things like immutable storage and air gapping. Okay, hold on. Those sound serious. Immutable storage, what's that? So think of it like a digital vault. Right. Right. Okay. For your backups. Right. So it makes those backups basically tamper-proof. Even if you get hit with ransomware, those backups are protected. So even if the hackers get in, my backups are safe. Yeah, it's like having a backup on a separate hard drive locked in a safe. They can't touch it. Wow, okay, that's impressive. So no matter what happens, I can always restore from a clean copy. Exactly. It's like an insurance policy for your data. All right, I like it, I like it. What about air gapping? 
That sounds intense. It is. It's like taking isolation to the next level. Basically, you keep your backup system totally offline, except for those scheduled times when you pull the data in. So it's like completely disconnected most of the time. Right. So there's no way for hackers to get to it through the network. That's serious security. I can see why you do that if your data is super important, like mission critical stuff. Yeah, absolutely. But I'm guessing that's not exactly, you know, easy to manage. It's not, no. It's definitely more hands-on. You got to be comfortable with a bit more manual management. So it's a trade-off, right? Convenience versus like ultimate security. Exactly. It depends on your needs and how much risk you're willing to take. Okay. So we've talked about a lot here. Veeam moving to subscriptions, the different licensing options, and even those hardcore security measures. But how do you actually decide what's right for you, especially if you just want something simple, you know, for basic backups? Well, there are a few key things to consider. Uh, first, your budget, obviously. Yeah. Subscriptions, they're predictable, but they add up over time. Right. And with perpetual licenses, you might have those one-time costs for support, so you got to factor that in, too. Okay, so it's not just the upfront costs, it's the ongoing costs, too. Exactly. It's the whole picture. All right. What else? Then think about, you know, how likely are your needs going to change? Are you growing rapidly? Yeah. Are things pretty stable? Makes sense. Because subscriptions, they're more flexible. You can scale up or down as needed. Right. So if you're in a dynamic environment, that's a good thing to have. Exactly. Okay. And lastly... I'd say, think about how valuable your data is. Oh, yeah. That's a big one. Right. Because if it's really sensitive information, you know, losing it could be devastating. So those regular updates, that support safety net, they might be worth the cost especially with all the threats out there. So it's like weighing the pros and cons, right? It is, yeah. Based on your own situation. Exactly. There's no one-size-fits-all answer. Now, some people might be thinking, hey, if I don't pay for Veeam support, can I still have a good backup strategy? Like, can you DIY it? You definitely can, but it requires a different mindset. you got to be willing to roll up your sleeves, get a little more hands-on. No more, like, calling for help. Well, you can still get help, but it's going to be more like, you know, the online community, forums, that sort of thing. Ah, so like crowdsourcing your support? Exactly. You're tapping into the collective wisdom of the crowd. Okay, that's interesting. But I imagine there are downsides too, right? Oh, for sure. You're going to be responsible for your own setup, configuration, all of that. So you need a bit more technical expertise. Yeah, that makes sense. You can't just rely on someone else to do it for you. Right. You got to be a bit more tech savvy. Okay, so... What else should people keep in mind if they're going to go the DIY route? Documentation, documentation, documentation. You got to keep detailed records of everything. Yeah. Your setup, your schedules, how to recover things. Basically, create your own Veeam support manual. So you're basically becoming your own tech support. Exactly. You got to be proactive. And what about those updates? You know, the security patches and stuff. Yeah, that's crucial. You got to yeah. stay on top of that. Be really diligent. You know, Research any vulnerabilities, apply those patches right away. So no more just like waiting for Veeam to tell you what to do. Right, you got to be in the driver's seat. Okay, so going solo with Veeam backups, it's possible, but it's definitely not for everyone. It's not, no. It's for those who are comfortable with a bit more risk, a bit more hands-on work. So it's all about knowing yourself, right? It is, yeah. Your comfort level, your expertise, all of that. Exactly. You got to find the right balance for you. Okay, so before we wrap things up here, I want to leave you with something to think about. Imagine you've decided to go it alone, no Veeam support, you're building your own backup strategy, but you have limited resources. What are the trade-offs you're willing to make? Where's that line between acceptable risk and potential disaster? You know, it's a challenge, but it's also an opportunity to really understand your backups, become a master of your data. Yeah, it's empowering. It is. It's like taking control of your data destiny, maybe even discovering some hidden talents along the way, you know? Absolutely. You never know what you're capable of until you push yourself. All right. So that's it for this deep dive into Veeam licensing. We'll catch you next time for another exciting adventure in the world of data management. Sounds good. Yeah. It's all about, you know, taking charge of your data. Becoming your own data guardian. Exactly. I like that data guardian. It's got a good ring to it. So let's say you're ready to put on that cape, go the DIY route. What are some actual steps you can take, you know, to build a strong backup strategy, but without Veeam's help? Well, one option is, you know, looking into the open source community. Oh, interesting. There's some really great open source backup tools out there. I hadn't thought about that. What's the, the benefit of going that route? 
Well, for one, they're free. Oh, that's always good. Which is a big plus, especially yeah. if you're, you know, on a tight budget. Um, they also tend to be very customizable. Okay. So you can really tailor the solution to exactly what you need. And usually there's a really active community around them. Oh, that's good. You know, users, developers who are willing to help out. So it's like you're getting support, but it's not from, you know, a paid team. Right, exactly. It's more of a, a community-based support system. That's cool. That's cool. But I'm sure there are some downsides too, right? Of course, yeah. Yeah. Um, with open source, you're often responsible for, you know, setting it up yourself, yeah. configuring it, maintaining it. Right. So um, it does require a bit more, you know, technical know-how. You got to be more hands-on, tech savvy. You do, yeah. You can't be afraid to get your hands dirty. Makes sense. What else? What else should people keep in mind? Documentation is key. Oh yeah, that's always important. It's like super important. Yeah. You know, create those detailed guides, checklists for everything. Like step by step. Yeah, step by step. You know, from setup to schedules, recovery, even troubleshooting. It's like leaving yourself breadcrumbs in case you ever need to, you know, retrace your steps. Or if someone else has to take over. Exactly. Yeah, you're thinking ahead. It's all about being prepared, right? It is for sure. Okay, let's let's talk about security for a minute. You know, we mentioned immutable storage and air gapping before. Right. But for those who are just tuning in, can you remind us why are these so important these days? Sure. So immutable storage, it's all about making sure your backups can't be messed with. Even if, you know, ransomware gets into your system. So it's like read only. Yeah, exactly. Like a read only copy of your data. Yeah. No one can change it. Not even the bad guys. So even if things go really wrong, I can still restore from those backups. Yep. You've got a clean copy no matter what. It's like a safety net, like a, a really strong one. It is, yeah. It's essential protection these days. Okay. And air gapping. So air gapping takes that isolation even further. Yeah. You're keeping that backup system totally offline. Wow. Except for those specific times when you're pulling the data in. So it's like physically disconnected? It is, yeah. Physically separated from your network. That's... That's hardcore. I can see why you do that if you're dealing with, like, top secret stuff. Right. It's the ultimate protection against online threats. Okay. So both of these, they sound great, you know, for security, but is it just for big companies? Or can, you know, regular people benefit from this too? You know, that's a good question. Because a lot of people think, oh, that's just for the big guys. But honestly, anyone who values their data should consider it. It's not about the size of your data. It's about how important it is to you. Exactly. Like those family photos, those videos. Right. Those are irreplaceable. Losing those could be just as bad as, you know, a company losing financial records or something. Absolutely. It's all about what matters to you. It makes you realize it's not just ones and zeros. It's it's memories. It's your life. Yeah, it is. It's personal. OK, so we've been talking a lot about the technical stuff. But at the end of the day, it's people making these decisions, right? Yeah. What advice would you give to someone who's just feeling overwhelmed? They just want to make sure their data is safe. I think first, take a breath. It's easy to get lost in all the details. No. But start with the basics. You know, mm -hmm. what kind of data are you protecting? How much would it cost to lose it? How much time are you willing to spend managing it? So it's like getting back to your priorities. Exactly. Once you know what's important, then you can start looking at options. Makes sense. And don't be afraid to ask for help. You know, there's tons of resources out there, people who can guide you. Oh, absolutely. The internet is a a wealth of information. And we've been talking about Veeam, but there are other backup solutions out there too, right? Oh yeah, definitely. So how do you even start comparing them all? Well, online reviews are a good place to start. Like they go that. tech sites, forums, mm -hmm. even the vendor websites themselves. Right, right. And talk to people, you know? Oh yeah, word of mouth. Yeah, your colleagues, friends, see what they're using, what their experience has been. That's always helpful. It's like having a, a personal recommendation. It is, yeah. It can make a big difference. Okay, so we've covered a lot of ground here. From Veeam licensing to different backup strategies, security measures, the whole shebang. But before we wrap up, I want to leave you with this thought. It's not just about backing up files. It's about protecting what matters to you. Yeah. Your memories, your work, your peace of mind. Absolutely. So choose your tools wisely back up diligently, right. and never underestimate the power of a good backup strategy. <laughs> Couldn't have said it better myself. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. We'll catch you next time for another exciting exploration of the tech world. Sounds good. You know, it's funny. We talk about backing up our computers, our phones, but what about our brains? Oh, that's interesting. You know, we're always learning new things, gathering information. What about backing up that? 
our own knowledge. It's a great analogy, actually. It's like creating our own personal knowledge base. Exactly, like a backup for your brain. Right. You know, we take notes, we bookmark things, save quotes. It's all about trying to hold on to those those insights. Yeah, it's like preserving those aha moments. Exactly. So that that knowledge doesn't just disappear. It makes me think about the importance of reflection, too. You know, taking the time to really think about what you've learned mm -hmm. and how it all connects. Yeah, it's like organizing those backups, making sure they're accessible, like yeah. defragging your mental hard drive. Exactly. Okay, so we've gotten a little philosophical here, but it all comes back to data, right? Whether it's on a server or in our heads. So as we wrap up this deep dive into Veeam licensing mm -hmm. and, you know, all things backups, what's the one thing you want listeners to remember? I think the key takeaway is that there's no one-size-fits-all solution for backups. It's not about finding that magic bullet. It's about figuring out what works for you. Right. Your needs, your risks, your budget. Exactly. You got to find that balance between cost, convenience, and security. It's like building your own custom backup strategy. It is, yeah. It's tailored to your specific situation. And it's an ongoing thing, right? Oh, absolutely. It's not just set it and forget it. You got to stay informed, adapt as things change, Keep those backups up to date. Be vigilant. Be proactive. Exactly. All right. Well, I think we've covered just about everything we can on this topic. We've gone from Veeam licensing to the philosophy of backups and even, you know, backing up our own minds. It's been a journey. It has. It's been a good one. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope you learned something new, maybe had a few aha moments yourself. And remember, data is precious. So back it up. Protect it. We'll see you next time for another deep dive into the amazing world of tech.